What's up my busy bees? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about the biology of mating in honeybees. This is a fascinating topic to learn about, to learn about how the colony cast are developed and how important genetics are to beekeepers. So a term that we all need to be familiar with is haplodiploidy, which all this means is that if you are a male bee, you are from an unfertilized egg. If you are female, you are from a fertilized egg. So males are haploid and females are diploid. Females, female honeybees in particular have 32 chromosomes, so 16 pairs, two of which are sex chromosomes. Male bees only have 16 chromosomes of which only one is a sex chromosome. So, Genetic diversity is very important in agriculture across the whole spectrum of agriculture. Farmers select their best cream of the crop of their livestock species or even crops to make sure that they have higher yields or more healthy animals, to be honest. Okay, so here is a basic demonstration of what is going on in a colony. The drone, the male bee, mates with the queen to pass on his genetic material to her, which she can then store in a specialized organ known as a spermatheca, which she can choose to either release to fertilize an egg to make a worker bee, or she can choose to not fertilize and make a drone bee. So she is in control of whether she wants to make a worker or wants to make a drone. He passes on no genetic material to this drone. Because remember when I said that he only has one sex chromosome? Well, he's also the result of an unfertilized egg, so he cannot be fertilized. There are special exceptions to this where you get diploid drones. I'll explain that a little bit later. Okay, so this is a more detailed representation of what's going on inside of a colony. So this is just one queen but I wanted to show both of her sex chromosomes, so a blue and a green, and then this one queen would mate with probably more than just this one purple drone, but for simplicity, I'm using the one purple drone. So if she chose to fertilize the egg, she would donate either her green chromosome or her blue chromosome to his purple chromosome, making a green and a purple worker bee, or a blue and a purple. Or if she decided not to fertilize, she could make either a blue drone or a green drone. Okay, let's discuss a special case, diploid drones, which are the result from inbreeding. This usually causes the shotgun brood pattern because the workers remove them because they die in their pupil stages because they usually don't make it to their adult stage. And if they do, they're born sterile, so they can't pass on any genetic material, which is a good thing. Okay, just to give y'all a visual on what I mean whenever I say a diploid drone. So this queen, which has a blue and a purple chromosome, mates with probably her brother, who is also a purple drone. So whenever this happens, she can choose not to fertilize it, making a viable haploid purple drone or a viable haploid blue drone, but if she does choose to fertilize the egg, one of two things can happen. She can choose to fertilize and donate her purple chromosome to his purple chromosome, resulting in an unviable diploid drone, or if she chooses to fertilize, she could also donate her blue chromosome to his purple chromosome, resulting in a viable diploid worker Thank you all for viewing this video. Next time we'll be talking about honeybee behavior and ecology. Like always, don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and tell your friends and family about us. Now, buzz off!